how long would it take you to earn a million dollars? According to the most notorious MMRPG hacker who made his living for over 20 years finding exploits and generating currency out of thin air, a couple of minutes while you and me were running around mining or slaying monsters for 10 hours to earn a couple coins, Manfred was selling hundreds of billions of digital currency that he told the game to give him and the game said yes. In the world of online video games there are many ways to play, two of these being you can play legit or you can cheat. If you were so inclined to cheat you would most likely head to a black market. These black markets have a variety of different services for sale depending on two factors. The first being what game you're searching for and the second being your ability to find said market that provides services for that game. In an FPS, a first person shooter, you are no doubt going to find the classics like aimbots and wall hacks without too much trouble, that's amateur hour. Tools for these games get more advanced and less obvious the more you are willing to pay or the better connections you have to the top coders. In skill based games that house ranking systems, you're likely going to find boosting services, accounts for sale with high ranks and therefore more prestige for the owner, and those boosters are going to subscribe to the same idea I opened this video with. Some are going to play legit, others are going to cheat. In games with economies, you're going to have currencies like gold for sale, powerful coveted items, and perhaps tools like bots that will play for you when you're offline. On each market you are going to have different types of sellers. You'll have the legit players who earn a little bit of cash on the side selling their time whether that be an account for a game that they quit, the currency they've been farming or their expertise in playing a game on your account. The legit players often likely due to it being safer than dealing with the public will sell or contract to a middleman service. These middlemen buy as much as they can from the private market and then they sell to the public for a markup as well as connecting customers to the boosters while taking a cut. At the very top of this hierarchy are the people that make the hacks, the people that exploit vulnerabilities in the game code to make this market possible. Except for legit currency or skills being traded which are few and far between, these hackers are the ones that allow the entire black market to operate. They make the wall hacks, they make the bots that people run dozens of to farm gold, they are the backbone of the industry. As kids, many of us dreamed of making a living playing video games when we grew up, but the reality of most people that make a living playing video games is that this is where they operate. And at the very top of this concept was Manfred. He started his MMORPG journey in the same place as the rest of the Western audience, Ultima Online. The difference being that when most people in that audience got bored and moved to a new game, Manfred got bored and started reverse engineering the client. Speaking of these humble beginnings in Ultima, Manfred's ill-gotten games came directly at the expense of his rivals, something he vowed never to do again. In Ultima Online, houses were a rare coveted luxury which were in finite supply. The world map was a set size and with 30,000 players occupying said map, there simply wasn't enough space for everybody. This of course made houses expensive and people were selling them on eBay for hundreds or thousands of dollars depending on the size and the location. Players would use these houses as a home base, storage to place their valuables, decorate with expensive furniture and to keep them they had to maintain upkeep or the house would fall into disrepair eventually vanishing from the world leaving all of the items on the ground for people to freely collect. You could also choose to delete your own house. You can likely see where I'm going with this and of course where Manfred went for his first business venture. While watching the data that was sent back and forth from the Ultima Online servers to himself he discovered the packets associated with deleting a house and attached was an ID of which house was to be deleted. He assumed that the server would check whether the character sending this ID was in fact the owner of said house and it didn't. He pulled up the house menu of his neighbour, found the ID, pulled up his own house menu, changed the ID from his to his neighbour's and pressed delete house. Much to his shock, his neighbour's house was gone. In Manfred's inventory was the deed to said house and on the ground was a collection of valuables. Manfred then went on a quest to delete the houses of all his rival guild members, claim the territory and sell them on eBay, netting himself a very easy, comfortable living, more money than he could make as a skilled software engineer while setting his own hours playing a video game. Eventually Manfred ran out of enemies and moved on to targeting houses that were in disrepair and due to collapse soon, the idea being that he didn't want to harm innocent players, though this is of course a contradiction by him doing it to enemy guilds 
and calls into question whether he was just trying to pretty up his image by presenting it this way. According to Manfred, he also tried to help Ultima developers by giving them exploits that were not important to his business, the ones that weren't going to make him a bunch of money, but could impact the game negatively. I decided with my friend that, we, you know, we found some hacks and we were like, we'll help him out. Well, I mean, the game has so many bugs, we'll give him a few bugs that we really don't care about. You know, just as an act of good faith. And um, so we shared these exploits with him. The GM talked to us. We kind of developed a relationship where we'd share information with the GM. So we found an exploit where we could place houses underground, which had interesting consequences because if you have a house underground and somebody walks on the land above it, they're invading your house. So you could kill them without repercussions, you know. <laughs> So we disclosed this bug to a GM. Uh, the GM got fired because the the company thought the GM was working with us. Because they were like, "How are these guys finding these bugs? You know, they have to have inside information." So the GM gets fired. Uh, I get banned. My friend gets banned. A bunch of ours get banned. So we're like, "All right, we tried to help you out. Uh, screw you guys." So we went around and deleted the houses on like all servers that Ultima Online ran. We deleted about probably five, six hundred houses. At this time, he logged out of Ultima for the last time, never to return. The developers came to work on Monday morning to discover what Manfred had done and were forced to roll back the servers to before his antics and apologize for the bug while getting to work on a permanent fix. Manfred decided at this time that he could not continue to harm the player base in this way and so vowed to stop, not to stop hacking the games for profit, but to stop having negative impact on the actual player base. Instead, going further underground and making sure no one would ever notice what he was doing ever again. Not the players, and certainly not the developers. The next game he went to was Dark Age of Camelot, and he completed his cycle. He enjoyed the game, he got bored, and he started to tinker, learning about the packets, trying to reverse engineer and hack his way to some fun, as well as, of course, some profit. If you send that packet while you're in game and not doing the logout sequence, you disassociate your session with uh, the instance of your character. So the game doesn't think you're logged in even though your character is logged in. So you can log in again and get a fresh copy of your character from the database. And what you can do with this is load up your inventory for a save to happen, uh, dump your inventory on a friend or in the bank, and do the BA-201 packet where you can log in again and you have all the items that were previously saved. So you can duplicate the entire inventory of your character, including your um, gold. People were selling items and gold on eBay, and he could create infinite amounts of items and gold. You can guess exactly what he did from then on. Of course, he would eventually be moving on to another game, but just to illustrate how silly the early MMORPG security was, this duplication bug existed until 2013, over a decade after Manfred was selling, which was in 2003-2004, which is also the time the eBay banned the sale of digital goods, which pushed the entire market deeper underground. This was the time when Manfred became the supplier for a Chinese vendor for the next few years. Now, just to put a finer point on this for you guys, people buy gold in these games, people buy items. The more popular the game is, the more demand and the more supply there will be for the sale of these products. Anyone who has to farm legit or even use bots will have a certain dollar value per hour that they cannot go below because it simply wouldn't be worthwhile anymore and they would move to another game or just stop entirely. With the ability to duplicate wealth, you can meet the entire demand of the whole market with unlimited supply, undercutting every other seller and putting them all out of business. This means you can single-handedly supply the entire game's demand, generating real-world dollars the whole time for things you've created out of thin air in seconds. This is essentially an unlimited money glitch, but in real life. The only limit to how much money you can earn if you're in Manfred's position is the demand of the market for you to supply. If you could only do this in a single game, you would probably have a good time until you ruined the game's market or the game's population died down, thus meaning that not many people are buying gold. But according to Manfred, the only game he didn't manage to hack money in was World of Warcraft, which would of course make sense since it was the big game from a big developer, which presumably would have better security. He did, however, manage to do many other things in the game, including increasing his talents from their maximum to triple the value, making his character massively overpowered, able to solo most dungeons in the game. So I hooked up my friends with this exploit and we were running Molten Core. I think Molten Core is a 20 or 40 person dungeon. 
and we were doing it with eight people. Uh, this worked for like a year until we kind of got overzealous and started doing, started taking it to PvP and like killing people in one hit and stuff like that. Players and the GMs didn't take too kindly on that, so... Uh... Which would of course lead to the generation of gold much faster than anybody else in the game. And WoW was the outlier. Every other MMO he played would end with him generating infinite wealth. He plays, he finds out how to generate the infinite wealth, becomes the largest supplier to the black market trade, and then moves on to the next game. Lord of the Rings Online, Darkfall on Holy Wars, Anarchy Online, Age of Conan, Rift, Final Fantasy XI, Final Fantasy XIV, Asheron's Call 2, Shadowbane, Age of Wushu, Lineage 2, The Elder Scrolls Online, and Wildstar, just to name a few that he's talked about publicly. According to the Darknet Diaries podcast episode that covers some of Manfred's untold stories, this is a brief rundown of his antics in some of those games. Lineage 2. He found a bug when buying items from a vendor. He could change the item ID the vendor was selling and buy any item he wanted for any price he wanted. Even items that were not allowed for players to have. And the reverse was true. He could sell a stick to a vendor, but change the item ID in the packet and the vendor would pay as if it was a high level expensive item. Final Fantasy Online, the first one. He found numerous integer overflow exploits in this game. Like when he tried to give another player a negative amount of something, that player would end up with the maximum amount of it instead. Lord of the Rings Online. He could sell a rock to a vendor, but say it was a diamond, and the vendor would buy rocks at diamond prices. Rift Online. He could withdraw negative platinum from the guild bank, which would result in positive platinum in his inventory, allowing him to create as much gold as he wanted out of thin air. Final Fantasy XIV. It had the same exact exploits as the first Final Fantasy. One allowed him to split stacks of items like potions and conduct an integer overflow during the split, like trying to take negative one potion from the stack. This resulted in him getting two billion potions. The most ridiculous of course being the Wildstar example. So that one was creating a bid on an auction house. Uh, so the specifics of that one were you'd create a maximum signed 64-bit integer bid, uh, which was around 9 quintillion, whatever. You'd have to Google it to get the exact number. And the game would take that maximum bid of 9 quintillion, and it would add a 20% fee on top of that, which would put it up into, uh, you know, 11 quintillion or whatever. So when I tried to subtract 11 quintillion from your character, it would roll your uh, money amount back into the positive and you'd end up with 9 quintillion in-game platinum. If you were to take all the Wildstar online platinum that Manfred had and sell it for real money in today's market value, Manfred would have 397 trillion US dollars. According to Manfred, he treated this like a real business and he paid his taxes, he even described his job as follows. I was basically extending the or expanding the game's functionality to provide players with in-app purchases before in-app purchases were a thing. He refers to himself as an ethical black hat hacker, just providing a service that players wanted that the developers didn't yet provide. Now knowing a thing or two about MMORPG economies, Manfred, whether he wants to admit it or not, was destroying the economies of these games. It isn't as simple as he makes it sound. To put it into perspective, most MMORPGs nowadays, even if they are considered pay to win, do not sell you currency or resources that are gathered in the game directly. They usually sell cash shop items that you can trade to other players for their in-game resources or currency to not create an infinite pool of money that will break the economy over time. If you just create infinite money, Inflation gets ridiculously out of control. Manfred is clearly an intelligent individual capable of making a living exploiting games made by billion dollar companies without being caught for over 20 years. I don't believe he truly thinks he didn't cause harm in this pursuit of a career, but it is interesting to hear what he has to say and how he thinks this is fine because other hackers were doing really bad things and they are truly the bad guys. A lot of the Chinese and Russian hackers that are involved with this, and there's a lot of them, they hack in a way that's completely black hat and completely unethical. They don't care about compromising servers. They'll send malware to people that play the game just so they could you know, uh, install a keylogger and steal their game credentials and they'll you know log into hundreds of accounts at a time and basically strip the characters and accounts naked uh, 
immensely hurting the players that are playing this game. What he was doing may have been less in your face to the player base, at least after the Ultima Online antics, but he was still contributing to a massive negative aspect of the industry that many people never even knew existed. As he noticed that in-app purchases were becoming the norm and claiming he did not want to compete with the developers, which he believed would have crossed the line into unethical, he quit his career as an MMORPG hacker. So he laid down his black hat and picked up a white one. Manfred has since come out publicly with who he is, done multiple interviews, including a DEF CON talk where he went over some of his exploits, talked about how he did them, created multiple YouTube videos where he does live hacks into current MMORPGs such as Elder Scrolls Online, Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars 2, all while working as a security analyst. All the bugs he shows nowadays are reported to the developers in advance and fixed before he puts them public. So that is the story of Manfred, the most notorious hacker the online gaming world has ever seen, with zero legal repercussions and now a public face to the screen name that supplied a yet unknown dollar amount of black market digital items across dozens of online gaming worlds. Chances are, if you ever bought from the black market in any of these games, you were buying from something that Manfred created out of thin air. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.